this is today's program opening prayer jia ammo joseph a student from madhyavarla diocese welcome speech by riyan chellai a student from trichy diocese class will be taken by mr john joseph topic body language what of thanks angelin sharona from student from coimbatore diocese concluding prayer ronisha shalin student from vellu diocese Mr. John Joseph is a certified trainer of Junior Chamber International. He responsibilities being handled. Is he was the chairman of Space HR Solutions, director of Vikas, state resource team member, and coordinator of Co consultant trainer, state palliative care project, government of Kerala, member of Alappuzha district committee for protection of child rights, member of the direct board of. Unaided education institutions of diocese of Alappi. Now I call upon Jia Ammo Joseph for the opening prayer. Jia Ammo Joseph. Our beloved God, who are in heaven, thank you for this blessed evening that you have given us to gather together and look unto your face, Lord. Thank you again for keeping all of us safe from all harm and danger. Lord, we thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. to gather together from different states and different dioceses lord we pray for all the participants of this program lord fill everyone with your wisdom and knowledge so that all will excel in their studies lord help everyone to achieve their goals in their life lord we pray for all our teachers and pioneers of this program we praise you for the great vision that you have given in their minds lord be with them to conduct the program according to your will lord be with us today so that we will do our best we pray all this in the precious name of lord jesus christ amen welcome speech by riyan chellai as student from trichy thanjur diocese riyan chellai from trichy diocese please unmute welcome to those who believe in the power of dreams and join in the exploration of environment and become a positive soul a very good evening to one and all gathered in the meeting session it is my pleasure to welcome mr john joseph sir he is a jci certificate trainer and also been the chairman of space hr solutions and director of vishwa institute of contemporary allied studies he is also a socially responsible person by being a member of alappuzha district committee for protection of child rights and also a member of anti ragging council a hearty welcome to you sir i extend my warm welcome to mr matthew koshi honorary director and a great motivator i welcome the directors and coordinators from various dioceses i welcome all the students for the great session i welcome you all thank you thank you then i call upon mr john joseph sir for the class <coughs> Good evening, Matthew Kushi sir, and uh, my fellow learners. There, I see some about uh, 142 people, including me. Two of them that uh, is mine itself. I have two devices connected uh, just to take care of uh, any 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 unforeseen network connectivity or uh, any issue. So altogether, it's a wonderful crowd. All uh, youngsters out there. So uh, may, uh, let me express my sincere gratitude to Matthew Kushi and all the members for giving me such a wonderful. opportunity there has been a international convention happening in one of uh, the biggest hotels in uh, ernakulam kochi and this international convention was of orthopedicians from world over many famous orthopedicians were attending the meeting and it has been a three day convention first day evening after the meeting everything is over four orthopedicians decided to go for a walk at marine drive ernakulam Marine Drive in Ernakulam is uh, such a beautiful place for evening walk. And these four orthopedicians, one was from America, the other one was from uh, United Kingdom, the third one was from Russia, and the fourth one was from Japan. And they were traveling through the in a car driven by, by a Malayali taxi driver. They went to Marine Drive and they started walking. And by, while walking, they were discussing about uh, a lot of things. All of a sudden, they saw a man. a few meters ahead of them is limping he is just limping and limping and limping all of a sudden their curiosity started working they are all orthopedicians right so the american orthopedician is uh, maybe the senior among them 
He said, oh, I think that is something wrong with his hip bone. There is something wrong with his hip bone. The second man said, who is from United Kingdom, he said, no, 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 no. I'm so sure the trouble is with his knee. There is something wrong with his knee. Then obviously the third person who is a Russian, he said, no, I think it, is, it has something to do with this angle of the leg. And the fourth man said, the Japanese man said, no, no, I think that has something to do with this vertebral collar. They started arguing, all of them are really eminent personalities and orthopedicians, very successful, very knowledgeable. They started having a fight, somewhat of a fight, arguments, loud. Seeing all this, this Malayali taxi driver just went to the man who was limping and asked, what is actually wrong with you? Why are you limping? And that man said, who is limping? I am not limping. It is because my slippers, the strap of the slipper is broken, nothing else. The strap of the slippers is broken, nothing else. I am not limping at all. And all the orthopedicians were taken aback. They were just like embarrassed because they jumped into conclusions. Uh, though it is a talk, there is a lesson. Can anybody tell me, you can use the chat box, why and how come these four world famous orthopedicians came into such a conclusion. What would be the reason? And I'm looking at the chat box. Is anybody responding? Oh, it is too uh, technical, uh, this thing. Judging a book by its cover from uh, body language, somebody over analyzing. Yeah, I'm happy that I'm getting a lot of answers there. Keep on, uh, keep, keep going. I would like to get at least 10 answers for that. The correct answer is not just body language. It is because the actions of that man, wrong way of judging, okay, let's not be too uh, judgmental. Facial expression, no, actually overconfidence. No, 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 let's not be judgmental. I just asked, what could be the reason they just made such a conclusion. It is not overthinking or anything. It could happen to anyone. It doesn't matter whether you are an orthopedician or not. The real answer is that the movements of that man who was limping because of his uh, slippers were not good, resembles that of a person having some trouble somewhere, right? Yeah, the action, like the Venya from Tamil Nadu said, the action of the man resembles something, which resembles something and which forced us to think in such a way that something is wrong somewhere. And it is true in just four seconds, we judge a person. We all judge a person and at the same time, we need to understand we also get judged. We are also getting judged. We judge the people in just four seconds. Under Below four seconds, we are judging people. And same thing will happen to us also, right? We are being judged by the people. Okay, uh, can anybody tell me, looking at me, what do you think of me? Pushes. Put it in the chat box or you can use the mic. I'm okay with it. What do you think of me? Whatever it is, I need an answer. What do you think of me? Think about me. Genuine? Yeah. Any other answer? Intelligent? A very active person? Wow. Smart? Wow. Thank you very much. Confident? Wow. Many people say confident. So for six and active and a good person, confident, calm and collected, jolly, yeah, so nice. Free-minded, wow, energetic, relaxed, confident, faithfully, sincerity, self-confidence, confident and educated person, wow, looking perfect. Thank you very much. Calm person. Okay, let me stop there. Friends, we are all uh, meeting for the first time. We are all meeting for the first time. Then how do you, you made all these assessments about me? We are all meeting for the first time. You don't know how, what kind of person am I as such. What helped you to be judge a book by a cover? It is okay. Many a time, I'm telling you, it takes only less than four seconds to judge a person, to come into certain conclusions. This is scientifically proven. It took just, it takes just, Four seconds, right? Then, what is leading us to take such assessments and conclusion? That is the looks, the action. That's it. 
That is called body language. Oh, somebody is saying I'm a honest person also. Okay, uh, probably, probably that is one thing I get most to you. The rest of the things I leave with you. But when you say I'm an honest person, yeah, I, I really want to be. And I, I take pride in it uh, saying I'm an honest person. Okay, so uh, friends, I take all those things as a compliment to me. But let me remind you again, we are meeting for the first time. And uh, just in uh, five or six minutes, you all came to conclusion that this man is sincere. This man is honest. This man is confident. This man is calm and uh, relaxed. Collected. You also, what you did right now is what I'm saying. Judging and coming to a conclusion. And that is called first impression. That is called first impression. And the first impression is many a time the lasting impression. And the catch is that if we are not able to create the first impression, it will take us a lot of effort and time to change the impression. To convince them is going to be a pretty difficult affair. So what should we do then? We have a session on body language. So let me put it this way. Be careful about creating the first impression. That is body language. Even before we utter a single word to another person, that person will come into certain conclusions. And at the same time, we will also be doing it about the other person. So creating a first impression will help us to have a lasting impression and build a, build a wonderful relationship with other people. So that is our topic, body language. So friends, let me check with you whether my language is okay. You can say yes or why in the chat box. Um, whenever I started, before starting a training, I always check with my friends, my participants, my fellow learners, whether my language is okay or not. So I would like to check out in the chat box whether my language is okay. Okay, okay, okay. It's all yes and okay going up. Yes, 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 yes. Fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. So friends, uh, one more agreement that we need to get in. We, we are going to have an agreement with each other. It is like whenever you feel like that you, you cannot follow or understand something, either you use a mic or uh, share in the chat box, so I'll be saying it again. Because whatever time I'm going to spend with you, it is for your benefit. It's for you, your benefit. Why I'm saying this is that uh, we had a very strange and interesting experience with one of our senior trainers by the name Sunil Kumar. Sunil is from Andhra Pradesh. Now it is in uh, I don't uh, now it is in uh, Telangana. Sunil is a senior trainer and uh, we consider him as a guru, our guru. Sunil uh, went to Japan for a training assignment. And the very moment he, he was about to enter the organization where he is you know, supposed to take the training, one Japanese guy said, Ohio. Sunil couldn't make out exactly. Sunil couldn't understand what exactly the other man is saying. So Sunil replied back saying, Sunil Kumar. This Japanese man furiously looked at him and went away. And Sunil realized there is something wrong somewhere. Sunil went to another Indian who was there and asked, what is this Ohio? And that man said, no, that is good morning in Japanese language. Sunil started feeling embarrassed. It's not a good thing for a trainer to replay without understanding something. So the next time, it was morning time, Sunil was about to enter the lift and the same Japanese guy is standing inside the lift. So Sunil thought, I should correct myself. Okay, yesterday I, I created a bad seed. So today morning, it is morning time, so I should correct the mistake. So Sunil wished this Japanese man saying, Ohio, and the Japanese man replied back, Sunil Kumar. Okay, so friends, there are two types of languages. One is the language that we speak and the unspoken language is called body language that is our topic. so i just try to convey with you the importance of language and the risk of the spoken language is that it can be interpreted according to our mother tongue there are certain words that could be very much confusing in the language that we speak, but there is only one language which cannot go wrong. 
that is body language. Think of a situation where one American and one Chinese see that American English cannot be understood by any Chinese people. And the Chinese Mandarin language cannot be understood by American people. All of a sudden, there is a Chinese man and an American. They are meeting for the first time. The China man, the Chinese person knows only Chinese or Mandarin. And the American knows only English, the American English. They are meeting for the first time and there are no people who can translate it, no uh, facilities to translate. So they are trying to talk. They are trying to talk and talk and talk and talk. But little that both of the men understand. Both are really good in speaking and understanding, but there is a huge language barrier. Both cannot understand their language each other. Then, in another situation, there is a Chinese guy, a Chinese man, a Chinese person, and an American. Both are deaf and dumb. You know who are deaf and dumb, right? Who cannot speak? and who cannot hear. Both the Chinese and the American are deaf and dumb. But unlike the first situation wherein a Chinese and American man both are able to talk and hear, had difficulty to communicate and convey their ideas to each other. But in the second case, wherein a deaf and dumb American and Chinese meet, they started communicating and conveying the ideas without any difficulty. How is it possible? And what is the learning? I would like to have it in, your, in the chat box. Okay. Friends, or you can use a mic if you are comfortable and confident to talk using the your, your mic. You, you may do that or uh, otherwise you put it in the chat box. Whatever answer. Okay. Don't worry about the grammatical correctness on the all. Nothing. Actions. Sign language. Actions. Sign language. Body language. Yep. yep. They are actions. Yeah, exactly. They show something like something like this. And both the parties, both the team involved, both the receiver and the sender understand it without any ambiguity, any confusion, no lack of clarity. That is what is good and what is that is risky in body language. Because just by observing a person, we can understand what is his state of mind. What is he trying to, what kind of situation he is going through. All these things are there. So that is, that makes our topic important to understand body language. So I'm going to share my screen there. If at all you have some doubt, Anytime you can use the mic to talk to me. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen. So I hope the basic concept of body language is clear to all of you. The words that we speak can be misinterpreted, can create confusion, can, have, can be having lack of clarity. But when it comes to body language, no issues. Universally. World over, everybody will be getting the same message. And that is the broader scope of our topic, which is called body language or non-verbal communication. I'm uh, just sharing my screen. I hope it is visible. Is my screen visible to you, friends? I would like to just reiterate what I said earlier. You have about four seconds to make a good first impression for those who come in contact with you. In the first four seconds, people often make spectrum judgments about you and tell themselves. People will be telling themselves whether I would like to trust this person or not. From the looks, obviously, certain features, right? Then, whether I am going to like this person or not. All these have psychological background. It could be like if I am uh, some 
if i have some resemblance to very, uh, any well known person what could be that one resemblance i am having with uh, many well known people can you make it uh, 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 can you put it in the chat box don't worry don't worry i'm okay with it what is uh, what could be one probable resemblance i have uh, with many well known people cool yeah please put it in the chat box expressions not really face expression school face action one major resemblance according to me is my baldness okay i have a bigger forehead or oh, physical features that is too polite too politically correct actually in maya that is my baldness of my head right so certain resemblance certain facial features certain physical features okay that makes us to like or dislike the other person whether i am going to find this person kind or not see we are meeting for the first time and in just less than 4 seconds we conclude that whether this man is going to be kind or not and whether this man is intelligent or not i got those comments in the chat box somebody is saying i am intelligent i don't know honestly i don't know about my iq okay but there was a person who is meeting me for the very first time in their life said i am an intelligent person also. this is a universal fact so friends body language is important why because we are judged and we are judging us we also judge the people it is a universal fact so you cannot make a good impression first impression through your words alone in fact non verbal communication represent between 60 to 75% of what you communicate look at the condom somewhat 60 to 75% of our communication is through non verbal communication and the non verbal communication include body movements and posture how am i moving around how am i walking how am i sitting okay then my gestures the movement of my head and my hands basically it is how my movement of my hands and legs okay yeah let me check it out uh, you can use the chat box just to give you a small idea look at me look at me very carefully i hope you are all uh, just focusing uh me there on your screen okay i'm just nodding like this what is the message that you are getting i'm nodding like this and i'm nodding like this what all impressions are you getting there what all impressions are you getting there first one is yes second one is no look at that that is just chess okay then there is something called the eye contact eye contact is considered to be the best channel of communication and to keep the rapport on if we are sitting across a table okay and if we are talking to each other whatever relation we have if we are not maintaining eye contact then all of us are there can be a mind block both the people cannot understand what they are trying to say and convey whatever language they are talking that is in manner if there is no eye contact the channel become inactive okay and at the same time there is something called the touch many people you must have observed okay and you can analyze yourself also whether you have the habit of touching while you are talking to others whether you are talking or not it's something different whether you have the habit of touching then the kind of space that we take how close we go near to a person that is also critical so these are the aspects the posture the gesture eye contact and facial expression then touch and space these are the aspects or elements of non verbal communication before i go and uh, analyze with you or discuss with you these points in detail is the fundamental clear or not can i have a yes or no in the chat box if the fundamentals are clear we move on and try discussing the various other aspects 
in detail, each aspect in detail. If it is okay, yeah, thank you very much. There is a, oh, so nice of you friends. You are all with me. Okay, okay so I'm changing it. Okay. This is where we should have a clear understanding about the thing. Only 7% is conveyed by the words we speak. But 38%, 38% is how we speak. Hello, good morning. Is not similar to, hello, good morning. Both are different. I said the same thing, right? Hello, good morning. And hello, good morning. It's the same thing. Same words. Hello, good morning. But from the way I said, you got very different feeling. Can anybody tell me there in the chat box what is the first feeling and what is the second feeling? When I say good morning, two times, what was the first feeling that you got and what is the second feeling? Tone is different, I know, but the feeling, real feeling, soft and harsh voice, happy and angry, there you are. First one was sweet, pleasant, and the second one was happy and angry, excellent. See, the way we say the words, that is intonation, pitch, pose, etc. makes a difference. 38% of the message is conveyed through the vocal or the way I am saying it. Only 7% is verbal or the words carry that meaning. And 55% is non-verbal, the body language. So probably we will have to look, into, look for a change in the curriculum. As, uh, especially in the school days, in the school curriculum, to include body language also. Right? 55% of the communication is happening through body language. Look at that. And uh, you should be. Uh, there are three sections for body language one is kinesics, then prosomics, and haptics. Kinesics is the action that anybody can see. In that, we have eye contact, facial expression, posture, and gesture. In prosomics, it is the space that we take, how close we stand to the other person, or how close we are sitting to the next person. And haptics is about the touch, our habit of touching us. These are the three sections of body language. Then eye contact. Eye contact, I said, told you, is a link, active communication link. I'm, I'm not reading it completely. You friends can read it. I made it a bit elaborate because we have people from different backgrounds. Okay, so go through it. And if you have some doubt, you may ask. But for me, eye contact is the best communication mechanism to convey the concept and convey the concept in an effective manner. Why? Because eye contact is the indication of trust and honesty. Eye contact gives a feeling that this person is honest and this person is this person is trustworthy. If we are talking to a person and if we are not looking at him, if we are not maintaining eye contact, that indicates that I am not a trustworthy person or I am a not an honest person. Why? Because it, the other person is thinking like this man is trying to hide something. So it is all about maintaining an eye contact. Then only we can convey the message in a very effective manner. And the results are also dependent on the kind of eye contact that we maintain. Okay. So I move on. What is the purpose of eye contact? This is something that is we need to discuss. Purpose of eye contact is the way we speak. The way we speak, are we timid? Are we stressed out? All these things can be evident from our eye contact. If my eyes are, I'll just uh, remove my spectacles. Look at my eyes now. I hope it is visible. Okay. When, uh, if I am uh, blinking my eyes so fast, that denotes something. If I am looking away, if I am trying to look at you from the side of my eyes, these are all things telling a different meaning altogether. 
if i am looking away from you that means i really don't want to talk to you in a comfortable way if i am my eyes go towards the upper side to the corner of the eyes that means i am trying to lie all these things are that okay then maintaining eye contact shows the interest and the attention obviously if i am trying to talk to you and if you are not looking at me that means you don't have any interest in it and you are not ready to pay attention then maintaining the eye contact help us to invite or control the interaction the way i look at you yeah. i hope you uh, uh, you can see me properly okay now i am looking straight to the camera straight into the camera like this my eyes itself reflects some sort of seriousness okay so with that uh, we can have control of the situation or at the same time now i am smiling and my eyes are also smiling okay then it could be dominating threatening or influencing then providing feedback during a speech if the audience is maintaining con eye contact with the speaker that means the audience is following you they are with you and that reveals the attitude of the person also it is like you just look away or you are not maintaining eye contact that can be revealing your attitude if it is a serious discussion going on and you are dutifully involved but you are not maintaining attitude then the attitude is very evident you are a non cooperating kind of a person or you are not a team player that reflects on your attitude okay too much of eye contact can also be dominating it could be lack of respect it could be threatening it is a wish to insult you stare at one person's eye continuously gradually there will be vibes vibrations happening then we will start doubting why are why is this man looking at me like this is there something wrong with him is he having enmity with me all these doubts will come up if it is too little eye contact it is like lack of interest and we draw in the eyes if we are you two people are staring at each other and all of us are in the one person just we draw the eye contact that means that person is sub submissive ready to submit these are the purpose and indications of eye contact any doubts you may ask you can uh, either use the mic or you can use the chat box otherwise i will go to the next portion of facial expression is it okay friends this is something that we need to understand step by step everything each and every aspect is critical why because 55% of our communication is going to happen through body language a language which we are not going to talk but can be without words okay fine thank you very much friends so let me just check it out uh can anybody tell me this is the first one there is a man sitting on the chair from this expression probably uh, the i got uh, the eyes are not visible but still what is the expression he is trying to make just by looking at the position of the eyes the first person looking in uh, sitting there on that uh, colored chair can anybody tell me on the chat box that man want to be intense and he doesn't want to have a conversation or a contact with anybody there is a little child there in its play pen lying comfortably in the play pen what is the expression now looking at the eyes of that little child what can you say interesting happy yep very kind also yes obviously curious also yes no doubt the little child will be always curious and now uh, the little child is ha uh, happy then there is a lady who is uh, holding a phone and uh, look at her eyes can anybody tell me what is the kind of situation she is going through yeah she is angry she is doubtful yes irritated obviously fine great and uh, here is another man making two different eye contacts what what do you make out of it 
this man irritated is it funny yeah confused exactly that's the word no interest confused exactly that is what we do right we will uh, we can, if we cannot conclude we cannot understand something all of a sudden our eyes will go up like this looking that the other person will make out that this man is confused yeah and the last one look at the lady she is trying to say something look at her eyes and let me know what is going on yeah what is the feeling of what can you make out of it happy interesting yes i am into the conversation i want to continue with the conversation shock is it a shock straight forward yeah shock it is not shock it is interested yeah that's interesting okay so i hope uh, almost all i uh, in a happiness i'm trying to convey it fine so i i, I just uh, understand that you guys are following what i'm trying to convey thank you very much let us go to the next session are you all ready are you all with me there we go next is facial expression okay this goes hand in hand with eye contact that is something that we need to understand the moment our facial expression changes the looks also change the eye the position of the eye the width of the eye everything changes so facial expression and eye contact is very much synchronized look at those figures those photographs everything is different right this is called facial expression and uh, in indian culture we say navarasanga nine expressions okay and uh, we have more here we have somewhat tall all the tell expressions are different so i want you people to concentrate and just tell for yourself don't put in the chat box just by the looks itself you can make out what is their state of mind whether they are happy whether they are angry whether they are confused whether they are stressed whether they are afraid whatever all the feelings are there right they don't have to say that i am sad i am feeling happy i am feeling angry no just by the photograph looking at them each and every one you can understand what is their state of mind or the situation they are in this is about facial expression and one more thing i would like to remind you is that we can also have photographs like this every one that will help us to improve to correct our facial expressions okay so can our face speak happiness who would like to demonstrate it one of you whoever it is can any of you just demonstrate it to me and show me happiness in your face who would like to do that wow from tirumal velveli dash is i can see gifli gifli okay i hope uh, uh, let me just see whether i can uh, spotlight you oh no i i request everyone to pin gifli okay then uh, gifli can you just demonstrate sadness wow mm-hmm. and uh, i hope uh, everybody is doing it uh, all of a sudden gifli is not there ah gifli is there somebody pin her okay then this pleasure you are not happy wow excellent then anger you are angry for some reason wow look at your eyes <laughs> then there is fear you are afraid yeah good and let me just see whether you know how to show interest yeah i'm interested in uh, this body language session how will you do that yes you lean a bit forward right okay exactly fine so our face can also reflect but at the same time all of this go together okay then let us uh, just try to make it out look at the first picture where there is a lady holding a man and uh, what is the facial expression what can you make out from the her face not just happiness yeah it is not just happiness 
Can I, anybody use another word? Not interest also. Yeah, she's really excited. Exactly, Dania. You said it. Excitement, Nivya. Exactly. That is the correct word. She's so excited. That is what the facial expression is saying. Okay, let's uh, look at that man who is wearing uh, uh, the spectacles. What is his facial expression saying? Disgust, absolute disgust and doubt. Okay, good, confused, no doubt. Look at the face of these two ladies uh, sitting there in a, a restaurant. What is their face, especially the second one who is having a spectacle? What is uh, the expression in her face? Sadness, is it sadness? Not interested or uh, really an awkward situation, yeah. And here is another lady uh, with, uh, uh, yeah, you just tell me, angry, right? Not excitement, no, it's anger. Very much ang angry about something. Okay, then there is uh, three people, all the three have different facial expression. There are three people there. All of them have different facial expression. What is that? First one, the man uh, having something written on his uh, T-shirt. The man with something, yeah, he is somewhat happy. What is uh, happening with that lady who is in the center of the picture between uh, uh, both those people? Absolutely confused. That is it, exactly. Not interested or confused. What about the lady on the extreme right? The other lady on the extreme right, she is happy. Look at that. Three different facial expressions in one picture. All of them are showing different facial expressions. Then the, here is a lady uh, in the color, color photograph. What is the expression in her face? Somebody started saying funny, happy. Really funny, not really happy. It is funny. Okay, so friends, with facial expression, we got a clear understanding and we are also making this expression many a time. That is something we need to understand. We might be unaware, but we are all making the these facial expressions at times. Okay, so I move on to the next session, which is called the poster or the stand. The way we stand, the way we sit, the way we lie down. Okay, that is called poster. What if I'm going to do? I am just changing my stance. Okay, I'm sitting here, but all of a sudden I just moved a bit backward. What is that from my body? What is that you understand from this thing? Put it in the chat box. I just changed my position. Confident. Now I leaned forward a bit. I, I moved a bit forward. What is that? Relaxed. Not really relaxed. Nervous. I'm coming too close. That means I'm not confident. Okay, exactly. So from the poster, how we are standing, how we are sitting or how we are lying down, it conveys a lot, many a time. Think of a man who is standing with his legs kept apart a bit and having his hand tied on the back and holding his head high. What will you feel? He is standing like this, very confident, right? And a bit domineering also. So there is a lot of changes. So this is all about, uh, especially in uh, offices, the HR department will pay attention to people working on their workstations. Just by looking at these three people, you can understand their attitude, their state of mind. Am I right or wrong? Just tell me, what is the first person? What is the state of mind of the first person? 
what is the state of mind of the first person, the attitude of the first person towards work, dedicated, interested, confident. Second person, the second person, bored. Second person, yeah, somewhat tired, bored, is trying to, trying to get focused and all. And the third person, and the third person, not interested, very bored, or rather lazy. Yeah, many people use the word lazy. So friends, from the postures or the position of the body, how we stand, how we sit and all. Many a time we have been uh, told in our childhood days, while sitting on a chair, never keep the legs on the cushion or the seat, right? Why? We have a cultural importance to, towards that. What could be the impression that we are going to create if somebody is all of uh, coming into our place all of a sudden? In our house, right? In our home, we are told not to keep our legs while sitting in a sofa or a bed or wherever. Why? The people respect, matter of respect and disrespect. They will be considering us as uh, people without manners, right? So all these things are there. All these things are there. So posture is even more critical. So let us examine some common postures. Sagging is like, wow, well, now I am sagging. I hope you people can see me. Okay. I just lost my shape. I'm sagging. That means I'm a bit depressed. Then forwardly, I'm moving a bit forward. That is a posty attitude. I'm leaning backward like this. I hope you people can see me, right? I'm leaning backward like this. That means I have a negative attitude towards the whole situation. Arm folded across my chest. That is unsympathetic. I don't want to have any emotional connect with you. Then arms held loose. If I'm talking, if my hands are freely moving, that means I'm open and I'm having a positive attitude. Then upright posture. I'm sitting like this, upright. I'm trying to say I'm the boss. I'm trying to have a higher status than you, right? Correct? Then bowing the head like this. I want to show a lower position or a lower status. Then self-wrapping, many people have this. This is not uh, crossing the arms, this is crossing the arms. Okay. And this is like many people do it, self-wrapping. That means I want self-protection or I'm submissive or I'm withdrawing. Then moderately upright like this, enthusiasm and friendliness. This is upright, too much upright. And this is moderately upright. This shows my enthusiasm and friendliness among the crowd I am with. Okay? Is it clear? Then let us examine. What is the first man's posture? The man who is trying to cover his face. What, what is his state of mind? Tired, depressed, tensed. See? Sad, upset, disappointed, depression. Oh, lot of answers there. Okay, okay, okay. Then there is this man who already have the, his tie and everything loose. Okay, and uh, suspiciously looking somewhere. The man having the white shirt. What is that? Look at his posture. Don't look at his face. Yes, he is doubtful. He is tired a bit. Suspicious, curious. All these things are there. Confused. Okay, great. Then there is a little boy sitting on the staircase having a cap or a hat on his head. Sad. Look at that, sad. Everybody is saying that little child is sad. Though we cannot see his facial expressions or eye contact till we pursue, we can very easily understand that little child is sad. Okay, then there is a beautiful lady in uh, white t-shirts. Look at her and tell me. Excited and happy. Excited, proud, joyful. Wow, great, funny, she's happy. That's good, that's good, that's good. So it is about poster. I hope from the looks of the people, we all can understand, okay? 
Fine. And uh, now I have a few questions towards you. If I'm going to hold the wall like this and lean towards it, what does that mean? There is a wall. Okay, here is a wall. I'm going to sit like this. While I'm uh, having the session, this uh, interaction with you, I'm going to sit like this. What is that? Tired. Not interesting. Okay. So this is how we just assess the people. Now I want you people to just look at yourself. Don't make a movement. Don't move from the position where you are right now and just do an assessment of yourself. Whether you are expressing the body language of interest and all. Many people move, right? Okay, that is a correction that we should be doing. I just try to make you understand the importance of body language. Okay, I'm not able to see you all because I'm sharing the screen, but I can very well understand. I'm so sure that many people all of a sudden corrected their posture. Okay, friends, this is very important while you are attending a session or you are there for an interview. The interview board will not be paying much attention to what you are talking. But they will be just looking at you and they can very easily conclude what sort of personality are you, how much interest you have, how confident you have, or uh, you are, all these things can be just assessed in a fraction of a minute. In a simple uh, assessment, they can work it out. So always be careful about your posture you maintain while you are walking through the street or while you go to the school or college or your uh, office, wherever, your posture, the way you stand, the way you sit, everything matters. So please be careful about it. Shall we go to the gestures? I'm not uh, uh, talking much about what are gestures. Gestures are those movements. Okay, the movements of our head and hands, the nodding, I already demonstrated. Okay, then the shoulder shrug. Shoulder shrug is the same. Okay, what does this mean? I don't know. Then puffed chest. That means your chest is lifted a bit high. That means I am proud or I take pride in my achievement. Then sunk stomach. I am a bit shy about our, my body structure. Then finger crossing. Finger crossing. I am looking for protection. I am nervous. I am insecure. Okay. Then avoid uh, eye rub or forehead rub or adjusting the uh, hair many a time. Several times. That means I am trying to avoid the eye contact. I am one. I am trying to hide something. I am lying. Then no tapping. You can see when a serious conversation is happening, many people will be tapping the nose like this. That is, mind your own business. In a perfect year, I don't want to continue with the conversation. Okay. Then thumbs up. Many a time we shows it. Can you all uh, show me a thumbs up on the screen like this? A thumbs up. This is wishing best of luck or victory, whatever. Then rubbing the palm together. That is, I am expecting some positive outcome. Not too fast, not too vigorous. Just like this. Okay. I am expecting something, something positive. Then thumb and finger rubbing. Money expectancy. This don't have any scientific basis. Okay. Then hands clenched together. I am confident. Right. So these are certain gestures which is very common. Then Looking at the gestures of those people, can anybody tell me? In the first first photograph, we had two people. Look at the man, and uh, next time you look at the lady. What is the man trying to say? His hands are open wide. They are arguing. And what is the lady saying? Her point, uh, uh, the finger is pointed towards the man. What is she trying to say? She's trying to. Not fighting. Yeah, she is giving instructions to the other man. Just do what I say or you are to be blamed, accusing. Okay. Then there is a little naughty boy who is scratching his head with a very, very naughty smile on his face. What is he doing? 
what is the expression is giving low what is the expression is giving yes confused absolutely then there is a little boy on the playing field pointing the fingers up what is he saying that little boy pointing the fingers upward in the playing field yeah he is uh, asking for some help right he need support okay then there is a party going on what is that uh, uh, expression of this lady with two uh, fingers up in one hand she is holding a water bottle and uh, she is pointing the finger on that lady towards her back what is that she is just making fun of her and here is a player holding the pointing fingers upward like this what is that not making fun it is like this encouraging yeah or giving instructions okay fine this is about gestures that we can understand and uh, these are things from the poster as well as the gesture combined together tipping hands is like frustrated many a time you rub your hands like this okay and you want to make a request like this then hands in the pocket that means aggression then hands on it again aggressive then chin stroking i am uh, no rubbing my chin like this what is that thinking and trying to make a discussion uh, decision then mouth guard i am trying to suppress something my words or telling a lie all of us are in my hands are trying uh, covering my mouth that means i want to hide something okay now the space the kind of space that we take uh, or the kind of closeness that we make to others is called proxemics in proxemics there are certain things that are uh, being felt by the other people when we come too close to them it is like they feel trouble they feel insecure if you are not intimate to each other very close to each other that help them they become defensive and at times they can go aggressive also and they might retaliate all of a sudden you go too close to a stranger they get trouble they get disturbed and so they take defense and they become aggressive also they will shout at you hey move away or they will come and give you a slap so be careful about the private space this science is called pros am i audible again yes sir yes sir so we discussed about the major aspects of body language let us uh, just recap on it three things kinesis haptics and proxemics in kinesis there is eye contact there is facial expression posture and gesture in haptic uh there is the space that we take how close we are going to stand and all then there in uh, the haptics uh, we have the touch many people have those uh, habit of touching each other but culture permits many a touches and one is that shake hand the way we shake hands with others have a lot of things to convey if you are giving a very loose kind of grip what does that mean just tell me put in the chat box somebody is offering a hand to me to shake hands with them but i am holding it in a very loose manner yes nervous not so confident if i am holding it too tight what does that mean too tight not in a normal way i am trying to overpower them right angry or something so if i am going to hold it like this then it is okay they should feel the warmth of the shake hand handshake and how much time i hold it that is also important when they hug usually it is 3 to 4 seconds and according to the cultural difference the, when they hug they will be hugging on both the cheeks if you go to uh, the arabian countries they have a uh, 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 what do you say uh, 
uh, wishing each other or uh, changing the pleasantries by touching the nose each other. So it changes from culture to culture. But at the same time, three things are there. The duration of the touch, the warmth, and the force that we use. Whether it is shaking a hand or tapping on the shoulder, whatever. The kind of duration, the warmth, and the force. Both the three things, uh, all the three things will uh, totally convey a message about the touch. Okay? So friends, I hope you got a clear understanding about body language and I made you correct yourself once. Correct. Talking about the posture. So always be keen about your posters uh, and your body language. Why? Because 55% of your communication is happening through the language called body language, which is never spoken. So while you are going for an interview or while you are with the, your seniors and superiors, always be confident and certain silly mistakes that we make is that we don't uh, stand giving equal weight on both the legs many a time we will be like dilly dally that means changing the weight on, from one leg to the other or leaning towards a wall or keeping our both the legs on the table these are certain things that need to be corrected and worked out certain certain small small corrections can give us a lot of advantage to create the first impression that can be the last impression. If you have some questions, please. I'm done with my presentation. Any questions, friends? No? Fine, thank you. Then uh, with the permission of uh, Matthew, sir, can I have uh, a feedback Excuse from... Me, uh, yeah, please. So many, uh, I find that many people most of them have, they shake their legs, they have the, have the habit of shaking their legs while they're in a public function or while they're in the class or whatever. Is that a good manners? No, uh, see, uh, uh, one thing is that we all have uh, certain habits. Okay, many a time uh, while we are, our legs or the lower portion of the body is covered. So that will not be, even while uh, uh, people are talking or delivering a speech, the lower portion of the body will be covered by the podium. If you are a fellow speaker who, uh, who, are, who is sitting behind them, you can see the movements of their leg. It will be many a time awkward. But for the audience, they are not getting a, getting a chance to see it. So it is okay. So let us not judge, but it is better that we don't make such movements, especially vigorous movements. Banners, I have no one to say anything because in the privacy and in the, their own comfort, people do a lot of things. Only when it is evident or apparent to others, that creates an impression. But for a teacher, obviously, when students are shaking their legs and all, certainly the indication is that they are not interested. They are not focused. They are not concentrating. I am not uh, saying it from the angle of manners. But their state of mind is very apparent that they are not focused, they are not involved, they are not interested. Thank you, Prima. Thank you, sir. Nice question. Uh, help me to explain another point. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So, Matthew, sir, I'm, 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 I'm done with my presentation. If I can have a feedback from a few of the participants, that would be really great. The students can. Now it is open for students. <clears throat> you can tell me uh, how uh, how interesting the session was, what sort of learning that you got, how it's going to help you. The basic purpose of this feedback is to give a total idea about the project our church is taking up. I know the kind of effort uh, Dr. Matthew Koshi, sir, and all is taking. It is for your betterment. So, it is very important that we should be having a clear indication about how much we are reaching you and how much this project and program is helping to you to transform. So please help us out to do in a better manner, to have more programs for you, please. I'd like to hear it from students, please. Please unmute your mic and speak. You can, students, please come forward. 
I would like to hear from at least three students. Friends, uh, don't worry about anything. Do have the confidence. Okay, your your feedback is very valuable. Oh, probably I will have to prompt you out. Okay, you can use the ch chat box then. Uh, sir, shall I do that? It is like asking you questions, whether it was really interesting or just interesting or boring. You have three choices. You can put it in the chat box. What do I do? Let's see. You have three choices. So it was interesting. That was very really interesting. Wonderful information. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, do you think that this will help you to transform you to create better impressions? And I'm talking about the effectiveness of the training. If uh, you guys are not going to adopt it and change yours, and our effort cannot be considered as fruitful. Okay, I'm done with uh, from my side. Thank you, Mathisa, once again, and uh, all the office bearers and uh, the respected priests of CSI Church and uh, the people who put in a lot of effort to make such uh, wonderful projects and programs uh, a reality and uh, making um, really valuable opportunity for our people. I, I heard about the galaxy of eminent personalities and speakers already interacted with you, nice. starting from Mr. Gurdjieff. Uh, Matthew sir was uh, 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 talking about it. I, I felt, okay, I, I am also you know, uh, 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 getting a chance to be with them. So uh, that makes me really proud and happy. Thank you very much once again. And friends are my little uh, 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 little brothers and sisters out there. Friends, try to understand. We are in a blessed world where a lot of eminent personality like uh, Matthew sir and all a wonderful team. You heard that question Alice ma'am just asked, right? So they're all uh, here to ensure that you people will have a fruitful, meaningful and purposeful life. Make the best out of it. Wishing you all the very best. May good God bless you all. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your thank you, sir, for your wonderful and effective class. And these students will speak at the end of this course. And they are, we are uh, promote, prompting them, motivating them to speak. I hope they will do it at the end of the class. So they are already, they didn't get chances for that. So hope they will do it in the end of the class. So I call upon Angel from Coimbatore Diocese to propose word of thanks. A warm and grateful evening to one and all present here. To our respected chief guest, Mr. John Joseph, management committee members, teacher coordinators, and my dear friends. There is a famous quote goes like that. The best and beautiful thing in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt by heart. Thank you is one such prayer among them. It's my privilege to offer the vote of thanks. First of all, I thank the Lord Almighty for making this event a successful for, with his blessing and praise. I extend a heartly vote of thanks to our honorable chief guest, Mr. John Joseph. Thank you, sir for your valuable presence in our mindset instead of your busy schedule. It was interesting to learn about body language. It enlightened our minds with, it will surely help us to uplift ourselves in the society and in future events. Thank you, sir. It's my immense pleasure to thank Dr. Matthew Koshi, sir, for conducting this course. Thank you, sir, for leading us into this wonderful journey and equipping us into a better one to face the challenges of tomorrow. With much gratitude, I thank all the teacher coordinators for being here and supporting us. Last but not least, I thank all the students for your active participation. I'm sure that today's program taught us a lot of new good things. I hope in upcoming days, we will learn a lot and grow together. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Angelin. Thank you. Good night. We will meet next Wednesday.